How will today's Excel tip enhance your data analysis? Join us in this detailed tutorial from our expert trainer who walks you through each step. Let's get started. In this lesson, we are going to continue this conversation about autofill. In a previous lesson, we talked about autofill and how we can use it for formulas. So we're going to have a little review on that. But first, let's talk about how we can work with formatting. Now, one of the cousins of autofill is something called the Format Painter. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to show you the Format Painter, and then we're going to dovetail nicely into something called autofill and how we can use autofill for formatting. Now, if we take a look over here in the upper left, inside of the clipboard group, you have this little paintbrush. Now, if you move your mouse over, you're going to see here it says this is the Format Painter like the look of a particular selection, you can apply that look to other content in the document. So as an example, let's say for example, I really like this name format, meaning it's got the blue, it's bold, etc., and I wanna apply it to this. So I'm gonna use the Format Painter to do that. So if you've ever done a copy and paste, copying and pasting will copy some text and all the other things around that text, whereas the Format Painter is kind of like a copy and paste. It's like only copying and pasting the format of something. In other words, the look and feel. So if I click on this now and then just simply choose Format Painter, I can now click on that and I essentially get the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now we're gonna use the autofill function to be able to take this look and feel, this format, and apply it to all the rest of these cells. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and click on name. And once again, I just want you to notice that I have this little autofill handle just waiting to be hovered on top of. I wait for my black plus sign, and I'm gonna very simply click and drag across. Now when I let go, you're gonna see something kind of unexpected you will see that, yes, it's taken all the formatting. However, it's duplicated it exactly as it was. Now, for some of us, in some circumstances, that might be great. It might be exactly what you want. So it's good to know that what autofill does, almost at its core, is that it does copy cells, depending on what you're actually working with. But I don't want that. So the reason why I'm showing you this is so you can have an opportunity to understand that this autofill options will then appear every time you do an autofill of any kind. So if I click on this now, you're gonna see that Excel is saying, hey, wait a second, I may not have gotten it right the first time, give me another chance, I've got other tricks up my sleeve. So you can see here, instead of copy cells, I'm gonna choose fill formatting only. Beautiful, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, but a little faster without talking. Click on that, go across, click on that, and then fill formatting only, and you can see how nice and easy that can be. Now, just a little note about the word formatting. Formatting can mean so many different things, not just the look and feel in terms of the font and the color and the shading and all that stuff, but it can also apply to number formatting. So if you like the date format of something, if you like the percentage, the dollar sign, anything else, and you want to essentially copy that, you can use autofill to accomplish that same goal. Really very, very handy tool. But that's just the beginning. Let's go back and do a little review on formulas in autofill. You can see here, I have this formula summing up this column very quickly and easily. I'm going to go across just like that, come over to here for average, and then I'm going to move my mouse over the autofill handle, click and drag, and we're done. And keeping in mind, it can go up and down as well as left and right. Now, let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper into autofill and see what wonders that Excel has in store for us. Now, you're gonna see on the right-hand side, I've created this little matrix to show you all the examples of what autofill can do for you. Formulas, formatting, months and days, a series of numbers, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, copying data, we've already seen that. And then also working with dates, we'll take a look at that. Maybe quarters and then periods. All right, you'll see what that's gonna look like. And then also I'm gonna show you some nice tips and tricks as well as the custom list. So let's go ahead and get into this. Many times you're gonna be doing a whole sequence and a series of months. Like you're gonna go from January to December or maybe your fiscal year starts in July. You're gonna go from July all the way to June. Excel is inherently aware of that sequence, of that set of series. So what I'm gonna do is just give Excel a little bit of a hint by typing out January, 
just like that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I want to apply every single month without having to type it out by using autofill. So I move my mouse over the autofill handle. I click and drag and then notice these little ghosts that appear. Boom. Just like that. I just saved myself a ton of time. Absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and do days this time. I'm going to type out Monday and then I'll drag that down all the way until Sunday. Now, pretty neat. But let's say, for example, I'm going to start off in the middle of the year. So let's go ahead and just do, for example, August and drag down. Excel knows exactly what I'm trying to do. And there we have it. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's do Sunday this time. Click and drag down until we get to Saturday. Lovely. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these, clean things up. But let's say I A want to go across this time and B, I wouldn't mind abbreviating it. Well, let's just see what Excel has in store for us there. Let's go ahead and so we don't take up precious space. I'm going to click down here at A21 and this time I'm just going to type out Jan. And now I'm going to go across and you're going to see how it continues that sequence, but it also abbreviates it. Really remarkable. Let's go ahead this time to do MUN. Click and drag across all the way to SUN. Really, really awesome. Huge, huge time saver. Okay, now let's go ahead and go on to this little combo sort of hybrid of both letters and numbers. Because notice here I have first period. Okay, but Excel is aware of that. They say, oh, well, okay, you know what? Sometimes when there's a first period, there's a second period and a third period. Well, all I have to do is give Excel a little bit of a hint, and then magically, it's now going to auto populate, keeping period the same, but then changing the numbers. Let's go ahead and try a different one. Let's just type out, let's say, shift one. Cool, let's do that. Love that. Amazing. It just finishes it all for me. Let's try it with something a little bit more complex. Let's try shift zero zero one. And now I click and drag down and you can see Excel does not even bat an eyelash and it auto populates based on that sequence. Now let's go over to here to dates. And this is when things get very interesting and sophisticated in a really, really neat way. So my goal is to say, hey, listen, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing a whole sequence of the first of every month all in a sequence. So in other words, I want to see May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, etc. So let's just see what happens when I just do an autofill. I just click and drag down and you're going to see Excel does its best to do what it thinks I want to do and it's just a sequence of days. And maybe that's exactly what you want and you're pretty satisfied. But as you know, that is not what I wanted. Well, if you recall, I have the ability to go over to here to my auto fill options to see yet more choices. Again, it's Excel saying, hey, you know what? I didn't get it right, but I've got other tricks up my sleeve. So when I click on my auto fill options, you're going to see I have way more options than I did the first time when I was working with my formatting. I can copy the cells. What it already did was fill the series. Don't really care about formatting. But notice I have all kinds of date related elements there to choose from. Fill just the days, fill just the weekdays, or just do the months. And that's exactly what I want. I'm going to go ahead and click on fill months. And just like that, I got exactly what I want. All right, so that's pretty neat. But now let's go ahead and stick with the dates for a second. And let's just do something and kind of give Excel a little bit of a curveball. And let's just see if you can figure out what to do in case anything goes awry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to convert this date format to a different date format, like kind of a long one. So again, I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose Format Cells. And then I'm going to go over to here to Date. And I'm going to choose this long date format. I click OK and then, uh-oh, what happened here? This is very important to understand because many times when beginners see this, they think that Excel is broken. They think that they did something wrong. All this is saying to me is that the column is not wide enough. Now, earlier when we saw this, we only saw it with letters. Okay, with letters, it'll actually truncate the words themselves. You can still see them. But with numbers, because Excel knows this is very important, it really wants to get your attention. 
because you cut off one number or a date, it can really be catastrophic potentially. So what I'm gonna do is use my auto fit by double clicking and we're gonna see beautiful, there we have it. So it's converted all of the first of every month to the long date form, beautiful. Okay, little sidebar. Now let's go over to here to our quarters and how many quarters are there? We know four quarters in a dollar, four quarters in a football game. Does Excel know that? Well, let's go ahead, I go here one, two, three, four. And as I start over again, see that? It also starts all over again, right? It understands that it doesn't just keep going willy nilly. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's now type out QTR with a space for quarter one. Let's try it again. See that? It continues to go all the way back in cycles through the numbers of quarters. Let's of course now do the word quarter one and you can see just the same. It goes from one to four. Really neat. Okay. Now let's just say I wanted to copy this right here. Earlier we saw copy be executed very automatically and very easily. We're going to essentially do the same thing, but I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Remember earlier I talked about one of the tips and tricks? Well, I'm going to show you a nice fast way to do autofill. And that's very simply by double clicking on the autofill handle. When you double click, you auto autofill. So watch this. I'm going to double click and it's going to go as far down as the most far element within your spreadsheet. So watch this, I'm gonna move my mouse over it, wait for my black plus sign, I double click, and then bam, it knows exactly what I wanna do. And it's as simple as a double click. Instead of clicking and dragging down on it, I can double click. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. In this case, I wanna do a sequence of fives, 60, 65, 70, etc. Now, if I were just to grab this one and drag it down or double click on it, I'm just gonna get it based off of 65. But since I want it based off of both of them, I have to highlight both of them. Remember, it's all about it giving Excel a hint. Now, if I highlight both of these, I'm saying, hey, this is the mold. This is the standard you should base your autofill on. So I'm gonna, so I'm very simply going to highlight both of these and then move my mouse to the lower right and then just double click. Beautiful, love that. And now 60, 65, 70, 75, et cetera. Amazing. Now for this one, I want to do a series. Okay. I actually wanted to make it go to 1001, 1002, et cetera. Now, if I were to double click right now, you're going to see it duplicates it. Not at all what I want, but it's a very easy fix to clean up. So all I do once again is go down here to my autofill options. And then I click on that and you're going to see here is this option for fill series, fill series. I do that and you'll notice it now does one, two, three, four, et cetera. It's really good for doing like numbered lists, for example. Like if I wanted to do a numbered list for all of these, right, to show you, I could very easily do that. I click and drag down, it repeats the number one. I don't want to copy, so I say fill series. And now you can see I've shown you the 11 examples of autofill pretty extraordinary. Okay, let's do one last example of autofill. Now, I'm going to wait for another lesson to do this because I want you to practice this because what we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to do something called a custom list. So pause the video, practice everything that I've done here, try some things on your own, any of the other content that you're working with, but most definitely try it with formatting, formulas, and then some of the other elements I showed you here in terms of the days, the months, and then working with some combination of numbers and words, and then even some of these other ones. What was your favorite part of this tutorial? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Visit the Simon Says It channel, explore our videos and training sessions, and decide what you wanna learn next.